every time you do anything musically, you learn something from it. Um, you don't always put a name to it. Um, I don't kind of do that thing that they do at the end of a South Park episode. I think we all learn something today, and then they encapsulate what that thing is that they've learned. Mostly it's just one big thing, which is learning that it's not all about me, and that it's about using the stuff that I can do to enrich someone else's music. How can I best serve the song? And things like that. You can't describe the instincts that you develop just by working more and more with different people and figuring out how to read what it is that they're trying to coax out of you. But hopefully it's just something that comes more naturally as you do more and more of it. When I was a lot younger, I would I never really had a practice routine where I would kind of get the metronome thing happening and do exercises. That I, I never had the attention span for that. But I would sit there and just put on a record and then play along with it. Sometimes I would be trying to pick out certain stylistic things that I heard happening on the actual record. You know, if you jam along with an Ingve record for long enough, you're going to start doing things like that just because you're hearing that kind of tonality and that kind of note distribution and you it kind of infects you in some subtle way, which was kind of the idea, just to let stuff osmose into the way I play rather than trying to steal anything specific and then practice one lick over and over again. But yeah, always I've just tried to play what I hear in my head. And that's really what improvising is, isn't it? Is it? Playing what you hear in your head and allowing the music you hear in your head to be informed by what you hear everyone else doing around you in any musical context. I would worry if a technique ever came first. Um, to me, the sound comes first. It's like I want to hear something percussive, or like maybe I would end up slapping if it started with something I heard in my head that had a percussive vibe. Or if I want to hear something fluid, maybe I'd do a tapped kind of arpeggio. And if I wanted something more abrasive and staccato, maybe I'd play the same notes, but sweet picking or something like that. Always the sound comes first, the technique is just there to serve you, I think. I've never tried to shoehorn a technique in to a piece of music just so I'd have a vehicle through which to let people know I could do that technique. Well, I've never really had a plan. I can't kind of visualise where I'll be in five years' time or where I want to be. I'll be at an airport in two weeks. I can visualise that. Anything beyond that, you know, it's not one of my natural strengths. But what I do is try and stay open to any potential opportunity and every time a possibility presents itself, I just judge it on the basis of whether I think it would be fun, whether it would be interesting, whether I feel that my particular skill set would be able to enrich that music in any way. And the weirder the better. For me, it's just a language. It's something I've always done. Uh, I can't imagine not doing it. If I, if, were I not so grateful for the ability to play music, I would almost be taking it for granted. It's just so normal to me. I think you just should be passionate. If you're not, maybe you don't need to play music. I think normally people know why they're playing music and they feel that drive and that obsession, that desire to sound better and achieve certain things. But you shouldn't have to force it. You do whatever needs to be done to get you where you need to be. If something's hard work, you shouldn't be complaining about the fact that it's hard work. You should be thinking about how awesome it's going to be when that's, that hard that's work true. pays off. That's and you true. need that mentality. It's yeah. about all three people, and in particular, it's about what happens between the three people. And if I could somehow teleport myself out of this body and be in the audience and watch an aristocrat's gig, I think what I would enjoy the most is just seeing the eye contact and seeing how people respond to each other, rather than just, I, now I'll watch the drums and see what amazing drum things are being accomplished, and now I'll look yeah. at the guitar and I'll stare at his fingers for a while. You know, the, the exciting stuff happens yeah. between the musicians. You know, it's about all three of us equally, which feels right to me. There's something I really like about not having a bunch of effects. There's something nice about just guitar straight into the amp, be in the same room as the amp, be close to the speaker, so yeah. the speaker and the string can hear each other and you get that nice feedbacky, sustainy thing. And just maybe a bit of ambience if you're in an yeah. unforgiving room. There's something I really enjoy about playing in that pure, uncontaminated way, but it doesn't work in every gig. I, I couldn't just turn up and be Blues Guthrie and do the Stephen Wilson gig. You need effects <laughs> for that, because that's a big part of the sonic picture. And I guess part of it is just the tradition of the instrument. When right. you think of a certain instrument, you think of the history 
of that instrument and what famous guitar players have done in your yeah. chosen field of music for the past few generations. And I guess that the fast thing just evokes kind of poodle hair and animal print spandex and all of that stuff. A lot of my kind of experience in the world of music doesn't really have words to go with it. You just kind of accumulate experience and in, in some cases I think I cheapen an experience by trying to express it. 